Welcome to Thrive with Pride by Age Options, an inclusive online space for LGBT plus older adults and those who care for them. This is a recording of a live event held on Zoom, which included a Q&A segment that was not recorded. This month, we welcomed Jen Dentel from Gerberhart Library and Archives to discuss several women highlighted in their 2022 podcast, Unboxing Queer History, whose work impacted Chicagoland LGBTQ plus history. Please see the video description below for a PDF of her slides presented and other helpful resources. I'm so excited for today's presentation. We are joined by Jen Dentel, who is the Community Outreach and Strategic Partnerships Manager at Gerber Hart, where she has volunteered since 2014. During her time at Gerber Hart, Jen co-created the Unboxing Queer History podcast um, and helped curate several Gerber Hart exhibits and has planned community programming and run Gerber Hart's social media accounts. Um, I won't be labor talking about Gerber Hart because I'm sure she's going to jump right into that for us. But without further ado, I will turn it over to you, Jen. The floor is yours. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Nina, for, for having me and, and Lucia for, for doing the background stuff. And it's fun to see Arnie uh, in person. That's that's really fun. Um, are my slides still showing up? I just moved the toolbar. So I, don't, I just always want to check. It's still good. Okay. Beautiful. Um, so yeah, I'm uh, Jen Dentel, and I'm uh, calling from Chicago right now. Um, I work at Gerber Hart Library and Archives. So we are an LGBTQ plus library and archives located up in Rogers Park on the north side of the city. And I am our community outreach and strategic partnerships manager. And I'm just really excited to be chatting with you today about uh, what Gerber Hart does, and then about a few of the women highlighted in our 2022 podcast, Unboxing Queer History. And I'm excited at the end to open it up to any questions you might have, to learn more from you about any stories you might have about Chicago LGBTQ plus history or the Midwest. Um, yeah, very excited for questions at the end. So moving right along, what is Gerber Hart? Uh, we are an LGBTQ plus library and archives. We were founded in 1981. Um, our goal is to collect, preserve, and make accessible the LGBTQ plus history and culture of Chicago and the Midwest. Um, and this is a photo from a visit earlier in February this year. This These were members of the LGBTQ plus intergenerational dialogues project. So this is a project with SAIC and UIC where they pair college students with elders in the community. Um, all queer elders and and they they have conversations and they make artwork together. So this was a fun research visit that we hosted at Gerber Hart this year. Backing up a little bit, uh, so Gerber and Hart, where does this come from? Um, so our two namesakes are Henry Gerber and Pearl Hart. Henry Gerber helped found the first uh, gay rights organization in the U.S. and that was located in Chicago in 1924, the Society of Human Rights. And then Pearl Hart was a lesbian attorney that was an early gay rights activist in Chicago. She helped found Mattachine Midwest in 1965, which was a very long running gay rights organization. And she also worked with a variety of clients, including LGBTQ clients, but also uh, immigrants and refugees and and um, women. In, in a lot of, she was one of the first public defenders in Chicago or first women public defenders. And she uh, protected a lot of her gay clients from police harassment and entrapment and discrimination. And then a little bit about what we do. So Gerber Hart has a circulating library. So this is a, a lending library where anyone can check out books. They're all LGBTQ plus books that have been donated to us. And anyone over 13 can check out books. We're, we're not part of the public library system. So it's just a, a form that you fill in and then anyone can check out books. So it's a group of volunteers putting together a mailing a few years ago. And then this is our director, Aaron, uh, standing in the archives. Uh, the archives is one of our uh, largest collections of LGBTQ plus individuals and businesses from Chicago and the Midwest. So we'll talk a little bit more about some of the people highlighted in these in these collections later in the in the presentation, but includes anything from large organizations like Equality Illinois and Howard Brown. Uh, to you know, small single box collections of you know photo albums of people at home with their with their cats. You know, so it's anything LGBTQ focused in Chicago and the Midwest. And then lastly, we have our special collections. So you can see a couple a uh, couple things here. You can see our little Anita Bryant dartboard, but then also the the large tongue which used to hang in Carol's Speakeasy, which was a drag bar in Chicago. 
uh, named for Mother Carol, who was known for being very loud, hence the loud mouth. Uh, the tongue is heavy. It takes about three people to move. And my understanding is when it was donated to us in the 90s, uh, the tongue was black from all the cigarette smoke. So cleaning it was a was a big ordeal uh, to do. But our special collections has a lot of things. So anything from artwork, uh, posters, uh, those metal filing cabinets hold uh, flat artwork. Uh, we also have a lot of erotica, we have rare books, and then a large amount of periodicals like magazines and newspapers and, and newsletters as well. And again, we're community archives, community library, so anyone can look at any of this material. Um, anyone over 18 plus um, for the erotica, but then 13 plus for any other materials in the collection. And then Unboxing Queer History. So this was a podcast that we put together in 2022. You can see the image here uh, features Miss Tilly, the dirty old lady of Chicago, who was a drag performer who started performing drag in Ohio in the 1940s, moved to Chicago and performed drag um, all the way through the early 2000s. So this podcast was funded from a grant from Rails, which is a local Illinois library organization, and it was co-created by Ari Mejia, our director Aaron Bell, and myself, and then co-produced by Hannah Vitti. Uh, so some of the goals of the podcast, we wanted to be able to do a deep dive into several of the collections at Gerberhart and just add a little bit more context. Uh, personally, it was really wonderful just to be able to ask questions that, you know, it, photos we had or, or materials where we didn't know a lot about them, being able to do more research and get more information about them. And it made the collections a lot more accessible to people that weren't able to visit Gerberhart in person, uh, particularly those outside of Chicago. So you see here, uh, Ari's recording Aaron in the in the bottom, looking through some materials from Lorraine Shade Baskerville, which we'll talk about a little later. And then uh, Ari and Hannah are in the stacks and you can see on, on Zoom. So we did a lot of the recordings in 2020 and 2021. So we had to do a lot over Zoom. Uh, this is Ari and I talking to Owen Keenan, who's a really wonderful local Chicago grassroots historian. And so these were the eight episodes. So we'll talk about several that highlight uh, women from Chicago in this presentation, but you're, you're welcome to listen. All of the episodes are on our website and there's online exhibits that have photos for each episode. And I'm sure I'll, I'll send some links to Nina afterwards just to send out if anyone's interested in listening. So we have our first episode about Miss Tilly. We did an introductory episode to Gerber Hart. And then we talked about Amigas Latinas, which we'll be talking about today, as well as People Like Us Books, Lorraine Shade Baskerville and Gals. And then also Bill Kelly, which the Bill Kelly Chen K. Uwe collection is Gerber Hart's cornerstone collection. It's, it's, a, it's a large, about 200 square feet um, or 200 linear feet of material from Bill Kelly, who was a local um, activist for many years in Chicago, and then queer 90s activism. So first up, I just want to talk about Amigas Latinas. Um, Amigas Latinas was founded in 1995. Uh, it was founded uh, entirely by volunteers, and it specifically served the LBTQ Latinic community through a lot of monthly discussions, uh, workshops that they called Placticas. There were support groups, uh, picnics. There were programs both for the adult members as well as children. Um, and lots of public programming and events. So it was a it's a really wonderful space for people to explore multiple parts of their identity, largely founded um, because the founders wanted a space where they could explore being both Latina and lesbian at the same time. Um, the interview that we did for the podcast, it's one of the longest uh, episodes. So it is the longest episode. It's about an hour and more like an oral history format because we interview a uh, long form interview with the two founders, Yvette and Mona, who are pictured there. And it added a lot of context to the collection. So you see here one of the boxes and some of the materials inside of uh, a softball uniform, uh, dog tags, uh, buttons, things like that. But there's over, there's 14 boxes of materials from Amigas Latinas in our collection. So being able to talk with the founders about their intentions and hear from members about how important the group was to them really adds a lot to the collection. And what was really wonderful is so actually even prior to us uh, recording for the episode, these two artists, uh, Amanda and Luis, um, Amanda's a photographer and Luis is a filmmaker. They had been working with the Amiga Satinas collection for their own artwork. Um, and in 2022, they were actually awarded a grant to do an exhibit, which uh, came out at the Chicago Art Department in 2023. So I would say that Amanda and Luis's work with the collection, as well as the episode, has just drawn a lot of attention to the to the group and the collection. 
And the Amigas Latinas collection is definitely one of our most requested collections at Gerberhard, and anyone can take a look and, and learn about the group when they're here. So here's some photos of Luis and Amanda at their exhibit at the Chicago Art Department, and then a scaled down version of the exhibit traveled to Gerber Hart last October. And it's currently on display now. It's the Art from the Archives exhibit. It'll be coming down in mid-April. So if any of you are able to visit Chicago before that, you can see the Art from the Archives exhibit. Um, we're excited about the next one too, opening in June, but I, I really love the Art from the Archives exhibit. And then the next group I want to talk to you about is GALS, which is the Great Angling Lesbian Society. So this was a lesbian fishing group that was founded in the mid-90s by Sherry Peathers and Susan McCann. And it was basically set up by them because they wanted a space where they could go fishing with, with other, other lesbians. And it's a very small collection. It's just about a half a square foot, so a, a small small box. Uh, but it's incredible. It's one of my my favorite collections. It's full of photos and stickers and newsletters. And it, again, anyone can can view this material at Gerber Hart. Their newsletters are wonderful. You can tell how much fun they were having on their camping trips. Um, just, you know, they have little awards where they razz each other about things. And it was wonderful to interview Sherry and Susan uh, Neither of them are in Chicago anymore. They're actually up. Uh, one of one is in the North Woods of Wisconsin. One's in the Upper Peninsula. So we had to do audio. We couldn't even do Zoom because the the connection was a little little tricky. Uh, but what was really wonderful after the interview is uh, Sherry, who's pictured here. She actually sent me more photos and wrote a note, and that was you know made me cry. Uh, but it was just really wonderful. She sent a collection of photos and she'd written on the back what was going on in the photos. So this is Sherry and she puts, you know, huge bluegill that she uh, she caught. And then we have photos, you know, this is Claire's first fish. Um, and so having, knowing who the people are in the photos and just a little bit about, you know, this was CK's Outback, which was a lesbian campground up in Wisconsin or Illinois, actually. Um, and then this was another, they mentioned in the episode that they had to spend a lot of time baiting hooks for the girly girls. So this one is uh, the caption on the back of the photo says, trying to avoid fish touching her hand would not take fish off the hook. Uh, so it's really fun to see photos uh, that match up to what Sherry and Susan talk about in the episode. And now the next person I want to talk about, I think someone that everyone in Chicago should know, this is Lorraine Shade Baskerville. Uh, Lorraine founded Transgenesis, which was Chicago's first trans-run, trans-serving social agency in Chicago. It was founded again in the mid-90s. And she provided services for Chicago's transgender community. A lot of the services were, um, there was an HIV prevention program called TPAPS that I'll, I'll, the next slide has a photo from that. But just lots of education and counseling and support that Lorraine saw was really needed in the community. And so she created this wonderful organization. And the uh, TPAS, so this is a, a postcard, and that's Lorraine posing on the postcard, um, but it was a postcard that she could pass out specifically also to youth that were um, in, in the community that had, you know, safer sex recommendations. And Erin Bell, who is a co-creator and also our, our, our library's director now, she was able to connect with Lorraine over Zoom, and Lorraine lives in Thailand, so we have a wonderful interview with Lorraine talking about her work in Chicago, um, and her her background and why this work was so meaningful. And these were some uh, posts or uh, bookmarks that Transgenesis made, which is still, you know, these are still really relevant today. So having, um, just having materials from the mid nineties that that show just how critical this work was um, for, for safety. And we did a live episode uh, of Lorraine's episode where we had items from her collection on display. So this is me with Ari, the other co-creator, and then Hannah Vitti, who was a co-producer. And it was wonderful to be able to share her story in that setting. All right, and then the next group, I think this is the last group I'll be talking about, is uh, People Like Us. Uh, so People Like Us was a bookstore that was run in the uh, late 80s to mid 90s in Chicago. It was Chicago's only exclusively LGBTQ bookstore. We're really lucky in Chicago to have spaces like uh, Women and Children First and, and On a Bridge that offer huge amounts of LGBTQ materials, but People Like Us was exclusively gay and lesbian uh, materials. 
And it became more of a, a cultural center in Chicago as well. So it was around from 1988 to 1997. And they just hosted a lot of events and were a really wonderful space in Chicago. And the episode interviews both of the, the co-founders and Carrie Barnett, Brett Shingledecker. I think another thing that made this space so unique is at the time, um, most men's and women's spaces were very separate. And so having an inst you know, an institution that was founded by a lesbian and a gay man, um, they would mix their fiction, they would mix their events. So you had um, events that would appeal to a lot of different areas of the community. And Carrie Barnett um, actually donated uh, a large collection to Gerber Hart. So this is her here. And she was one of our, our presidents and a board member, longtime friend. Um, and so it's been incredible going through these materials and seeing just a who's who of 80s and 90s uh, LGBTQ um, figures. So you can see just Polaroids of a few of the people that visited people like us. So everyone from Leslie Feinberg, Alison Bechtel, Harry Hay, Greg Luganis. I mean, just just a lot of people. And it's been wonderful with the episode. So this is Jules um, in both photos who helped uh, write the episode. They did a lot of processing of Carrie's collection. And so we've been able to display items from the collection and artists and researchers have been able to use the materials as well. So just a little bit about why this has been so important to us. I think that Chicago gets left out. Um, Chicago and the Midwest gets left out of a lot of conversations about LGBTQ history in the US. So I think drawing, drawing attention to some of these figures and showing people just the richness and the diversity of this history um, is, is important. And so increasing that accessibility and also adding context so that we know more about the collections we already have has been really incredible. And in some cases has also resulted in more collections and, and obviously more visitors and, and volunteers, which has been great. And if you want to learn more, um, you can listen to all of the episodes on our website. Um, or on Spotify or, or po Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts. Again, I'll, I'll put together some links to send to, to Nina to send out. Uh, we also are online. So Gerber Hart, we uh, have a Facebook page and an Instagram page. If you are in or near Chicago, we always welcome volunteers. We welcome visitors. Please email me. I'm happy to set up a tour or answer any questions. Um, I absolutely love Gerber Hart and our collections, and I would be happy to talk with anyone. Um, and I'd love to get your thoughts, just any questions you might have about Chicago LGBTQ history, or if you've been, if you went to any of these spaces or met any of these people, I'd love to hear stories. And I'm just really excited to, to hear from you and, and answer any questions. So, Thanks again to Jen Dentel for joining us this month. Don't forget to check out the video description below for slides from her presentation and other resources discussed during Q&A. Sign up for email reminders of future events at www.thrivingwithpride.org. Thanks for watching.